to toughen stuff. Originally, I was going to work on a different project today, but I ran out of materials and had to put it on hold until the new supplies come in the mail. So instead, what are we going to do today? Why, play with shrink plastic, of course. And maybe make something productive out of it, like pins or charms or something. So, I've tried using shrink plastic once before, and it resulted in some hilarious failures. This was my first attempt. Not only did I tear the tail while trying to cut it out, but as you can see, it stuck to itself while baking, and despite my most valiant efforts, refused to unstick itself. After several attempts, I finally made one that came out okay, but I was not super happy with the way pastels or colored pencil looked on the shrink charms. This was probably mostly due to me not sanding the plastic well enough, but this time I want to try coloring them with paint to see if that will give the kind of coverage that I'm looking for. And what better supply to use when experimenting than one you've never used before and don't know what to expect from? I am, of course, talking about Posca pens. I have seen other artists on YouTube using these, and I did once have a white paint pen, a Sharpie, I think, long, long ago that I used for highlights on drawings. It stank horribly, by the way. Anyway, let me go on the record as saying I do not know if paint pens are going to work on shrink plastic or not. I have heard that paint may crack and flake off during the shrinking process, so here's hoping that it doesn't. Black, white, silver, and gold were the only colors of Posca pen that I could get right away. So for today, I'm just going to use the pens for outlining and fill in the colors with regular acrylic paint after the pieces have baked. So let's finally get to the action! First, I need to test the pens. So it's time to pull out the sketchbook. I don't know if the Poscas are going to bleed through the paper or not, so I'm going to slip a scrap piece of marker paper behind the sketch page. Ignore those hideous scribbles on the marker paper, please. First things first, we have to get the plastic off. Is there a little tear strip on this? No. I don't want to have to stand up and, and reach slightly to my left to grab the scissors. Maybe I can open it with my nails. So lazy. <laughs> okay, good. Got one. Now for the other. Oh, this one doesn't have a little divot. No, how am I supposed to tear it? Don't make me stand up and get my scissors. Okay. At this point, it would have been faster to use the scissors, but my pride demands that I open this without the help of scissors. Come on. I can do it. Believe in yourself. This is just sad. Okay. I'm going to cheat and use an X-Acto knife. It wasn't technically scissors. I still didn't use scissors, guys. Yeah! Yeah! Oh yeah! No scissors. Totally counts. My first impression of the pens is pretty good. They went down nice and smooth on the paper. That's me very badly drawing my Tinkle Bear Yuki. The next step is to sketch some designs for these charms. I didn't really have any ideas for them, so I pulled up a random theme generator on my computer. I'll link it in the description. Gee, it sure was nice of me to test the Posca pens right in the middle of the page so that I have to awkwardly draw around them. Good job, Grace. Anyway. The first keywords the generator gave me were fairies and bottle, which didn't make me super excited, but I did have a couple of ideas. The first idea I try is little kitty fairy girl sitting on a bottle. She was okay, but I'm not totally in love with her. Plus the design is pretty tall and I'm afraid it'll have problems sticking to itself while baking. My next idea is a fairy riding on a bottle, like a rocket. A bottle rocket? I apologize for nothing. Oh my, that looks stupid. Oh wait, what are you doing? He didn't deserve that, Grace! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'll, I'll redraw you. I think he deserves a beautiful face after what he's been through. Yep, beautiful. Finally, I tried the classic fairy trapped in a bottle, and this one speaks to me a lot more than the other two. She's so grumpy! I'm tired of that prompt, so I generate a new one. And the words I get are flaming, moon, and regal. Flaming seems like the odd word out in this matchup, but I try to incorporate it regardless. First, I try some sort of moon princess with flaming hair. 
Then I try a girl with a moon-shaped hairpiece and a top that looks like flames, I guess? Huh, the regal part kind of got lost in translation here. Oh well. The next set of prompts were keeper, dark, and glowing. Of course, the first thing I think of drawing are mushrooms. Happy derpy mushrooms! <laughs> After that, I decide to give a much more intricate design a try, and draw some sort of shadowy figure holding a glowing orb. A keeper of souls, maybe? The final prompts are crowning and entwined. So I drew a crown entwined with flowers and vines. Or, well, that was the idea. But my concept sketch was too small to add in the vines without everything looking like a mess of scribbles. So I just made a note for myself. I looked at all of my sketches and picked the four that I liked the best. Or at least the four that seemed the most interesting to draw. I wanted to see how much detail I could get into a shrink charm and have it still read well. So now I get to drawing the final designs I decided on. The plastic will shrink to approximately a third of its original size, so I draw these with that in mind. transfer the designs to the shrink plastic. I'm using the Shrinky Dinks brand, which I bought a long while back at my local craft store. For some reason, I bought the crystal clear type, which I had to sand down to give it tooth so my various art supplies would adhere well to the surface. I believe Shrinky Dinks sells a version with sheets that come pre-sanded, so I'd recommend getting that one for anybody interested in giving it a try. I use masking tape to adhere the drawings to the plastic sheets to keep the design in place while I trace it onto the shrink plastic with the Posca pens. While I'm using the Poscas, I try to be mindful of where I'm placing my hand, lest I stick it in wet paint and smear it all over the place, which is something I'd totally do. Once I'm happy with all of them, it is time to start the daunting and painful task of cutting them out. I tried cutting right up against the line art, and boy did I regret that decision. My designs were full of little crevices and awkward angles, and shrink plastic tears very easily, so going at it too forcefully is liable to ruin your piece. Refer back to that poor rooster I made. The moon girl is going to become a pin, but the other three are going to be keychains, so I use a hole punch to make a hole in each of them so I can put them on key rings later. Finally, they can go in the oven! And luckily, they didn't turn out like you know who. However, the paint did curl and get flaky, which is not super surprising given what I've heard from others. The question now is how I'm going to seal the paint so it doesn't all just flake off. After reading through some forums, I decide to try one of two possible solutions. First, I'll try coating a charm with Mod Podge. If that doesn't work, then I'll try using a spray sealant, but I'm hoping I won't have to because that would require taking them outside to spray. That's extra work. Ugh. So, now to decide which charm is going to be the guinea pig for the Mod Podge test. Who do I not mind getting ruined if this doesn't work? Hmm... I'm just kidding. It's this one. Ew. Ew. Gross. 
turns out that my Mod Podge is a little goopy near the cap. And so, with that ordeal out of the way, I apply a coat of Mod Podge. Luckily, the Mod Podge seems to have done the trick, so I went ahead and coated the rest of them off camera. Now it's time for the most dreaded part. Painting. Ugh. I don't know what it is about acrylics, but I just really don't like using them. To make matters worse, the area that I had to paint in was so tiny! At this point, some of you may have realized that I made a big mistake back during the lining process. I failed to think about the fact that the image is actually going to be viewed from the opposite side. So any place that I drew white on top of black is not going to show up when looking at the image from the other side. This isn't a huge problem on any of them except for the Soul Keeper. Those little feathers! I decided to try painting on the opposite side from the line art for this one to see how that would look and it looks terrible. You can see the gap in the plastic between the line art and the colors. Plus, the lines cast a shadow on the paint, making the colors appear much darker. Once all the colors are on the charms, I decide to paint the backs white in hopes of covering up the sloppy paint job I did. That... did not help. Anyway, I think the silver and gold Poscas deserve a shot too. I mean, a little bit of silver and gold accenting certainly couldn't hurt, right? So I used them to paint the edges of each charm, mostly to cover up all the places where my paint spilled over the sides. Shh, no one has to know. We're in the home stretch now. All that's left is to dome each side with some UV resin. Once both sides have cured, the shrink charms are done, and here are the finished pieces. If you're interested in buying one of these, they'll be available for sale on my store linked down below. Well, except for you. Into the failure pile with you. I'm looking forward to continuing to experiment with shrink plastic in the future. In the meantime, enjoy the soothing images of a Tinkle Bear at play while you consider, possibly, subscribing to this channel. Oi!